All right, so the Raspberry Pi 4 came out in 2019, and we have now passed the halfway mark of the year 2022, and that is three years later, and we still don't know anything about a Raspberry Pi 5. And, well, I have some thoughts and some features that this Raspberry Pi 4 needs or should have, so let's dive straight into them. But you know what you should be looking forward to? PCBs from PCBWay. PCBWay is a service that allows you to create custom PCB prototypes, flexible PCBs, 3D printing, and much more. And when comparing PCBWay to other PCB printing services, you might notice that PCBWay upgrades all of their standard PCBs to TG150-164 free. They also provide you with a quick order PCB section to help you pick and design your PCBs nice and quickly. PCBWay also automatically gives new members $5 for free, so you could get your first 1-2 to two layered standard PCB prototype with dimensions of within 100 to 100 millimeters and with a quantity of 10 for completely free. And they actually also have an open source community where you can find projects that other PCB way users have created. So if you're into DIY, you want to build custom projects, or just want to explore, PCB way is for you. All right, so let's just dive straight into it. So we all know that the Raspberry Pi 4 has pretty much the same, like it's pretty much the same size as the Raspberry Pi 3, and it really is quite tiny. It could literally fit into your pocket, and that's fine, but this small size does lead to some limitations that some other larger single board computers don't actually have. That is why I personally wouldn't mind the Raspberry Pi 5 to be Somewhat larger. I mean, I don't mean crazy large, just a little bit larger if it meant it's the addition of some useful I.O. or connector ports. For example, many single board computers nowadays are a bit larger than the Raspberry Pi 4. For example, the upcoming Rock 5 will be 100 times 72 millimeters, and the somewhat new Odroid M1 is 90 millimeters times 122 times 16. And the Kados VIM 4 is this measurement right here. Whereas the current Raspberry Pi 4 is 85.6 millimeters times 56.5. So, you know, it is a little bit smaller than some of these ones like the Rock 5 or the Odroid M1. And yeah, well, why is this really important? Well, the current Pi 4 has two micro HDMI, one SD card slot, four USB ports, and that's pretty much where all of the I.O. or where everything really ends. However, these new C single board computers support EMMC, SD, M.2, and even some have SATA connectors. And these connectors aren't mandatory or required. They just completely expand the possibilities of what these unique single board computers can do. For example, that SATA connection can lead to adding an SATA SSD or a SATA hard drive and using it as a NAS. Or that M.2 can lead to a much smoother desktop experience. Like, they can really make the single board computers function better. And, I mean, in 2022, do we really want to be running our operating system from a small and slow SD card? I mean, it's okay, but if we could use M.2 instead, that would just be a game changer for the Raspberry Pi 4. Built on M.2 would be really awesome. And yeah, so I would love to have M.2, and I personally would be fine without EMMC, I don't think that's mandatory, and I don't really see the Raspberry Pi Foundation doing that. I don't know, it seems like the other companies have always kind of added a built-on EMMC, but the Raspberry Pi Foundation has seemed to kind of stay away from that, and that's not a deal-breaker to me personally. And again, SATA I don't think is mandatory. I wouldn't be super sad if it wasn't there, but I would love to see. It would just expand the possibilities of projects that you could do with the Raspberry Pi 5. It would just be amazing. So, next of all, should the I.O. of the Raspberry Pi 5 change? Do we need more USB ports? Do we need full-size HDMI? Do we need ports like that? And, yeah, I would love the Raspberry Pi Foundation to replace, to replace the small micro HDMI with either one or two full-size, I underline, full-size HDMI ports. So, micro HDMI is fine. It works when you have the correct cable, but... 
I don't know, most people just don't have the cables. And when you're connecting it to a monitor or to, to a TV, you have to take out that other cable or use an adapter. And it can just be a hassle. And those micro HDMI ports really can bend quite easily compared to the big HDMI cables, the small ones just they bend really easily and they just break and that's that's just a bummer That's why I would love to have a full-size HDMI port on the new Raspberry Pi 5 and again I mean, I personally don't ever connect two displays to my Raspberry Pi 5 or Pi 4. I don't know if you guys do, so let me know down below in the description if if you're someone who actually uses dual displays with the Raspberry Pi. I don't really see the reason doing so. It's a, it's a pretty low power device. Why take some of its power by doing that, you know? But if you do, that is okay. So let me know down below. So because I don't do that, I mean, I would be fine with one HDMI port personally, but yeah. And I would also be completely fine with the USB port layout or the USB ports to be exactly the same. I mean, having all of the ports being USB 3 would be nice, but I don't think it's a necessity. I mean, having two USB 2.0 ports isn't that bad. You could just, you can, you can always use those just for your mouse and keyboard and then use the USB 3 for other stuff. So I don't say having all of them being USB 3 is a necessity. And another one of the upgrades, one of the very obvious upgrades would be to want a better SOC, a better CPU and GPU combo to give the Raspberry Pi 5 much better performance. And yes, I would love to have a more powerful chip in the Raspberry Pi 5, and I really hope it is more powerful. So currently, most of the other single board computer manufacturers are creating single board computers with very, very powerful processors such as the Rock chip RK3588, which is a fairly new chip to the market, but this thing seems to be incredibly powerful. And when this chip ever, or hopefully, if this chip ever gets Linux support, these single board computers that have this thing in it, they're going to be complete Linux beasts. I mean, they are already Android beasts, but with proper Linux support, these things could be insane. I mean, yeah, that's why I would love the Raspberry Pi 5 to be able to have something that could at least combat this 8-core CPU and GPU power house. Yes, this thing supports 8 cores and up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. This thing is is really a monster so I would hope the Raspberry Pi 5 to have some type of chip in it that can at least combat it somewhat and one of the most affordable single board computers with this new RK3588 chip is the Redaxa Rock 5 which hasn't shipped to everyone yet it's only shipped to developers but it is it looks really amazing and it comes around at, in a few models at different prices. However, the starting price for the four gigabyte model, I'm saying four gigs of RAM with this Red Axe Rock 5 is already $129, which I know may seem pretty high for a single board computer, but I would say for what you're getting and compared to the other single board computers with this chip on the market, it seems fairly good pricing. But before you start telling me in the comments that these boards do not have good software or community support, let me tell you, I am aware I do own a Redaxa, a Rock Pi 4, and, a, and I own the Redaxa 0, and they're not as good as something like the Raspberry Pi 4, but I don't think they're terrible. I think people sometimes exaggerate it, at least in my experience. I mean, Ubuntu seems to work well. Armbian, you know, they do, Armbian works too, so they do have proper Linux distributions that do function okay on these boards. So it's not amazing like the Raspberry Pi 4, but they're not terrible. And why did I tell you that the Redaxa Rock 5 comes around at $129? Well, because I really hope that the Pi 5 doesn't get an enormous price bump. So I personally would be fine with a $100 single board computer if it means quite a few upgrades like I've mentioned throughout this video. But I know some people might not and they might be kind of mad in the comments right now saying the Raspberry Pi 4 is a Pi 5 should be cheap and affordable. And yes, I do agree that it should be. So that's kind of where it gets hard. You really want, I really want upgrades, but when you get too many upgrades, the price gets too high. So you kind of have to find, I hope the Raspberry Pi Foundation finds a good balance between nice upgrades and also a still a fairly affordable price. Yeah, that's why I understand that. Some of these features I'm, I'm mentioning in this video probably aren't possible at the price point that many of us would like to purchase a Raspberry Pi at. So, you know, you just kind of have to balance that out. 
And one other thing that I would love for the Raspberry Pi 5 to come out of the box with is pretty good Linux support, which could be kind of wishful thinking. So the Raspberry Pi 4, in especially in the area of video acceleration in something like Raspberry Pi OS, it's kind of tough. I mean, even the Raspberry Pi 4 even lacks in watching 1080p YouTube because I just like, even 1080p YouTube is not the smoothest experience you've ever seen, which is kind of a bummer. I mean, I really would hope that the Raspberry Pi 5 can at least play 1080p YouTube without any issues. I, that that would be my hope, and I would hope that it could even do maybe higher than that sometime as well. So yeah, I hope that it comes with good Linux support out of the box. And yeah, so one of the things that the Raspberry Pi Foundation does really well that I think will continue on with the Raspberry Pi 5 is it's really professional software support plus huge, it's huge and amazing community. So, I mean, like, let's say you're new to the Raspberry Pi and you need help in some way. So you go to the Raspberry Pi forums, you go to Discord, you go to Reddit, you type in your problem. And I, I pretty much can guarantee you that there will be someone there who can help you with your issue. And you'll be able to figure out most likely. But when it comes to other single board computers, they really don't have as big of communities as the Raspberry Pi. So sometimes you're left to yourself quite more. And when I, what I meant by software support is, I mean, it's really phenomenal, the Raspberry Pi 4. I mean, official Linux distributions support the Raspberry Pi, such as Ubuntu, Pop! OS, Manjaro, and soon-to-come Fedora. So these big-name Linux distributions even recognize the Raspberry Pi 4 and give it a spot on their main website, which I hope will, be, will continue on with the new Raspberry Pi 5. So it's just a reason to consider a Raspberry Pi over something like one of these other single board computers or to wait for the Raspberry Pi 5 because you're, you're just going to have an amazing community, hopefully, and pretty good software support eventually. And the final thing I want to talk about is when will this Raspberry Pi come or this Raspberry Pi 5 come and will it hold all of these features that I mentioned? And no, it will not hold all these features, I'm pretty sure. And well, when will it come? Well, that's kind of hard to determine since currently the Raspberry Pi is in a pretty hard situation with this global chip shortage and you can barely find a Raspberry Pi 4 or a Compute Module 4. And if you can find one, they, they can be pretty overpriced through scalpers. So I would say that the Raspberry Pi Foundation probably has to fix the supply chain issue first. And then they'll actually, if they're in, the, if a Raspberry Pi 5 is in the works or if it's planned to come out anytime soon, I would say... It might take all the way until next year or even after that. I don't know. The Raspberry Pi Foundation has not said anything about the Pi 5 as far as I know. So I'm still really hopefully waiting for one to come out sometime soon. I would love to see one in the year of 2023. I mean, that 2023 is about four years since the last gen. And I think, I mean, four years is a pretty big gap in, be in between those two single board computers. And there is a lot that it could improve like I went over in this video. So that is basically my hope for what the Raspberry Pi 5 could bring to the table. So please let me know in the comments down below if you think that these features that I mentioned are really valid concerns or would you would you kind of disregard some of the ones that I said. Let me know in the comments below and if there's anything other that I did not mention about the Pi 5 that you would love to see, also hit me up down below. And if you enjoyed the video, a like. If you enjoyed the if you really enjoyed it, a subscribe would mean a lot because I would love to hit 10k subscribers sometime. It would just be incredible. So with all that said. Thanks for watching.